So Microsoft just dropped a whole new reinforcement learning framework. OpenAI rolled out safety-focused models. Telegram's Pavel Durov announced a decentralized AI network on the Ton blockchain. Elon Musk launched something called Growkipedia. Adobe went wild at Max with new creative tools. YouTube is quietly upgrading everyone's videos with AI. IBM released tiny but powerful granite models for the edge. And NVIDIA officially hit a $5 trillion market cap. There's been a ton of big updates this week, so let's talk about it. All right, so Microsoft just dropped Agent Lightning, and it's basically a way to make smart AI systems learn from experience without breaking everything in the process. Before this, if you wanted your AI agent to get better at its job, you had to rebuild half the system just to train it. Now, Agent Lightning watches what the AI actually does, what questions it gets, how it responds, what works, what fails, and then teaches it how to improve from those experiences. It's kind of like giving your AI a memory of its own mistakes and wins so it can train itself smarter over time. The cool part is that it does this without messing with the tools or apps you already use. There's a Lightning server that handles the training behind the scenes and a Lightning client that stays close to where your AI lives, collecting info about how it performs in the real world. Every time your agent gives an answer, uses a tool, or gets feedback, that data is sent back to the server to make it a little sharper next time. You can use your browser, your chatbot, or your workflow as usual. Agent Lightning just sits quietly in the background, learning. Microsoft tested it in three pretty different areas. First, they made an AI that turns questions into database searches, basically text into SQL queries, using a dataset called Spider, which has over 10,000 questions. Then, they tried it with a retrieval system that digs through Wikipedia-sized data, 21 million documents, to find and summarize accurate answers. Finally, they gave it math problems and connected it to a calculator so it could figure things out step by step. In every case, the AI got noticeably better the more it trained. There's even a smart feedback system built in called Automatic Intermediate Rewarding. It's like giving the AI small hints along the way instead of just telling it at the end whether it passed or failed. That makes training smoother and faster. And it's open source, so developers can plug it into their own projects and instantly start improving their AI agents. In short, Microsoft just made it way easier for any AI to learn how to do its job better, faster, and more independently. Now, while Microsoft is pushing the reinforcement learning side, OpenAI went in a completely different direction this week. Online safety. They released two models, GPT-OS Safeguard 120B and GPT-OS S Safeguard 20B, built specifically to detect harmful or fake online content. But these aren't typical open source models. They are open weight models. Developers can see the parameters and inspect how the system makes decisions but they can't alter the underlying code. So that way, researchers get transparency without security risks. The models explain why something was flagged, highlighting the reasoning process instead of just labeling it unsafe. They were built with Roost, the robust open online safety tools initiative, and tested with partners like Discord and SafetyKit. Both models are now available on Hugging Face for research, and OpenAI is inviting the broader safety community to stress test them. It's a step toward measurable accountability in AI moderation, something governments have been calling for but few have actually delivered. Meanwhile, over in Dubai, Pavel Durov, the founder of Telegram, unveiled one of the boldest blockchain meets AI projects we've seen so far. It's called Cocoon, short for Confidential Compute Open Network, and it runs entirely on the Ton blockchain. The goal is to build a decentralized AI network that keeps user data private while connecting people who own GPUs with developers who need compute power. GPU owners plug their rigs into the network, process AI tasks, and get paid in Toncoin. Developers pay in the same token, turning the system into a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for computation. What makes Cocoon stand out is privacy. Every task is processed in encrypted form, so even GPU providers can't see the data they're working on. Durov said the world has been losing its digital freedoms over the last two decades, and Cocoon is his attempt to reverse that. Telegram will be the first major customer, integrating Cocoon into its mini apps and bot ecosystem starting November 2025. With more than 1 billion users, Telegram's involvement could push decentralized AI into mainstream use fast. They'll use Cocoon for AI tasks like message summarization and draft writing. 
jobs that normally require sending user data to centralized providers like OpenAI or Google. Applications are already open for both sides of the network. GPU providers list specs, model type, memory, uptime, while developers specify the models they plan to run, such as DeepSeek or Quen, and how much compute they'll need. Shortly after the announcement, AlphaTon Capital, a NASDAQ-listed company, pledged heavy investment in GPU infrastructure to power Cocoon. Deploying high-performance GPUs worldwide, CEO Brittany Kaiser called it a pivotal moment linking blockchain, data protection, and AI, while Chairman Enzo Villani said Cocoon solves one of AI's biggest market gaps, privacy and security at scale. There's more. Cocoon connects to Kazakhstan's growing AI efforts. Earlier in October, Dorov met President Kazim Jomar Takayev to plan a Telegram AI lab in Kazakhstan using their supercomputers. Toncoin's price reacted quickly, around $2.20, with a $5.6 billion market cap, slightly down 1.5%, but with 3.4% higher trading volume, showing traders were paying attention. The TON ecosystem has already been expanding with payments, mini apps, and NFTs. Now, Cocoon adds AI computing to the mix, directly challenging AWS and Azure. The big question is whether they can attract enough GPUs and developers to make it competitive. But Durov's reputation for building privacy-first tech gives the project serious credibility. Speaking of tech moguls shaking things up, Elon Musk just launched Growkipedia, an AI-powered encyclopedia built on his XAI model. It's meant to rival Wikipedia, except instead of volunteer editors, the entries are written and maintained by AI to minimize human bias. Musk's goal is an unbiased knowledge platform that updates itself intelligently, addressing one of Wikipedia's oldest criticisms, editor bias and inconsistent accuracy. Growkipedia uses XAI to process and verify data autonomously, and the project project immediately sparked comparisons to Wikipedia. The main difference is philosophical. Grokopedia trusts algorithmic objectivity, while Wikipedia relies on community consensus. Reactions have been mixed. Supporters call it the future of factual accuracy. Critics say AI can't fully understand nuance or context the way human editors can. Either way, it's proof of how deep AI is pushing into information systems. Investors and tech analysts are paying attention because if Grokopedia works, it could redefine how online information is curated and verified. Even if it doesn't, it's another example of Musk testing the boundaries of what AI can replace in human knowledge ecosystem. And then there's Adobe, which basically blew everyone's mind at Adobe Max 2025 in Los Angeles. During its Sneaks event, think Oscars night for Adobe Research, they showed off more than 10 experimental tools, each looking like magic. The first big one, Project Motion Map, adds animations to static illustrator designs using text prompts. In the live demo, a still image of a burger came to life each layer animating separately because the system automatically detected and separated them. Next was Project Clean Take, an audio tool that lets you edit speech directly from a transcript. You can highlight a word in a video transcript, change the tone, or swap it for a different word, and the voice updates naturally. It also isolates background sounds into separate tracks so you can adjust or mute them and even replaces background music with AI-generated royalty-free versions. Project Light Touch was another crowd favorite. It can change lighting in any photo after it's taken. In the demo, flipping virtual lamps on and off changed entire shadow layouts in seconds. And finally, Project Frame Forward, which lets you edit a full video by just editing one frame. The presenter showed a paddle border removed from a clip and wedding guests erased from the background, all done by modifying a single frame in Photoshop with the AI applying changes automatically to every other frame. These demos show how Adobe's research arm is pushing generative AI deeper into the creative process, blending visual and temporal reasoning, so editing becomes almost conversational. Over on YouTube's side, the platform started AI upscaling videos. Low resolution uploads, anything under 1080p will now automatically upgrade to HD and soon to 4K, though only on TVs for now. When it's active, you'll see super resolution under the video quality options. Creators can opt out, but the default experience is about to get much sharper. YouTube also expanded thumbnail limits from 2 megabytes to 50 megabytes, meaning true 4K thumbnails are coming. They're adding immersive previews for flipping through channels on TV, 
new shows layouts that bundle videos into bingeable collections, contextual search that prioritizes results from the channel you're on, and even QR codes linking directly to product pages mentioned in videos. TVs are YouTube's fastest growing surface, and these updates make it feel more like an interactive streaming hub than just a video site. And speaking of optimization for small devices, IBM just dropped something called Granite 4.0 Nano, and it's basically their way of squeezing serious AI power into tiny models that can run right on your own device, no data centers, no cloud bills. These aren't toys either. There are eight of them, ranging from around 350 million to a billion parameters, and they've been trained on the same massive 15 trillion token data set as IBM's biggest models. So even though they're small, they still carry the same brain power. The cool thing is how they're built. The hybrid versions mix two different AI designs, so they use way less memory without losing the smarts of a full transformer model. That means you can actually run them on laptops, phones, or even inside browsers through tools like VLLM, Llama.cpp, or MLX. IBM also made sure everything's open and transparent. They're fully open source, certified under ISO 42001, and even cryptographically signed so you know you're downloading the real deal. When IBM put these little guys up against competitors like Quen, Gemma, and Liquid AI LFM, they actually came out ahead, not just on general reasoning, but also on math, coding, and even tool using tasks that most small models struggle with. So yeah, Granite Nano might be tiny, but it punches way above its weight. And then there's NVIDIA, which just made history by crossing the $5 trillion market cap line, the first company ever to do so. The stock closed at $207.04, up about 3%, putting its valuation above the GDP of countries like India, Japan, and the United Kingdom, according to IMF data. Only three months ago, in July, it had passed $4 trillion. That kind of growth shows how massive the demand for GPUs has become. Every AI model, from chatbots to image generators, depends on them. NVIDIA's chips once designed for gaming now power almost every major AI deployment on the planet. CEO Jensen Huang recently revealed new chip orders worth $500 billion, a $1 billion investment in Nokia for 6G development, and a partnership with Uber to build autonomous taxis. They're also teaming up with the United States Department of Energy to construct seven AI supercomputers. Last month, they invested $100 billion in OpenAI for data centers dedicated to future chatbot models. Politically, Huang's even coordinating with the Trump administration, which lifted some export restrictions on chip sales to China in exchange for concessions. Trump called him an incredible guy and plans to discuss chip deals with Xi Jinping at APEC. There are concerns from the Bank of England and the IMF about an overheated AI stock market, but Huang insists this isn't a bubble. He says chatbots have evolved from novelty to real profit engines, and the hardware demand backs that up. Whether or not the market corrects later, Nvidia's dominance looks unshakable right now. And that's where we are right now. Thanks for watching. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.